So to get started, we're gonna hit Shift A, go to Mesh, grab ourselves a cube here. Then if we go to our camera view, we can see we have a nice view, but we wanna get a little bit closer. So I'll just up the focal length to something like a 70, so we get a nice view, a better view here. Then we can go over here to our shading tab, make sure we have the 3D viewport and a node workspace set up. Then we can just go to our camera preview, go to rendered mode, and for the lighting, I'm just gonna be unchecking scene world and using one of the built-in HDRIs. Then for the render engine, you can use Cycles or Eevee. I'll stick with Eevee just for the duration of this tutorial, but it works the same in Cycles. And as for that, all we have to do is select our cube and press new here. I'm going to name this Mosaic Tile, like so. Then we're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna search for a brick texture like this. Then we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have the Node Wrangler add-on installed in our preferences. So go to Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons and type in Node Wrangler to the search bar and hit this check bar right here. Then with our brick texture selected, we can now press Control and T, which will give us some mapping. Then we're gonna take the UV coordinates from this texture coordinate into our mapping. The reason we're using UV coordinates is because this texture will now work on any object with a UV unwrap, and which is what we want. We can use object or vector, but if we preview this by hitting Control Shift and left click, we can see that we currently have this. It's a little bit sideways, and to do that, we can just simply rotate it 90 degrees on the Z and get it facing the way we want. But if we used generated, we'd get something like this, and this is a bit whack. If you ask, <laughs> like, what is even going on here? And that's because they can't tell where to map the bricks to, stuff like that. So we use UV coordinates for things like brick, wood, and etc. So all we have to do next is change some settings on this brick texture to get more looking like tiles. So to do that, all we have to do is take this brick and row height right here and change them to both 0.25 like this. So now we have squares. We also need to take away the offset. So we're gonna change this offset value to a zero and now they all line up perfectly. Then the mortar size, we're gonna take in half, so we're gonna put it at a 0.01. Then the scale on this guy, I mean, we can leave it here if we adjust it how much we want. I'm just gonna put it at a six, so that it looks a little bit cleaner in that way. Then for the next step, we're simply going to go into this white and make it a pure white. Then this gray here, and change the value to a 0.5. This way we have a larger variation of colors, even though we can't exactly see the difference happening. If we go over here to standard, we can see a little bit more of a difference in our colors, but we're gonna stay on filmic. So you don't need to actually go to standard. Anyways, that was just to explain something. Now we're gonna add in our colors, and to do that, we'll press Shift A, search, and go to color ramp right here. Take the color from our brick texture into this color ramp. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign twice to add two additional stops. Then with this black, we're gonna position it at a 0.535 and change the color to a hex value. I'll read it off to you a couple times real quick. The hex value on this is a 3F0E0E. Again, that is a 3F0E0E. Just like that, it's a dark red. And if we control shift and left click to preview, we can sort of see what it's doing here. Basically, the color produced from this brick texture here is a black to white range. So then by, with this color ramp, what we do by adding this color in is it sort of mixes all of them together and we get the desired effect of having a bunch of different colored mosaic tiles, which is super cool. All we have to do is get these next stops changed and we'll be good. So this next one we'll position at a 0.765. Then we're gonna change the hex value on this guy to a B86239. Again, that is a B86239. This is sort of an orange color, but it is slightly hinted towards a yellow almost. But yeah, anyways, this next one, stop, we will put at a 0 0.930, so 0.93 like that. Then the hex value is a F48F35. Again, that is an F48F35, just like that. As you can see, we're already getting some really cool colors in here. So yeah, on this last one, it's gonna be close to a white, but slightly saturated towards yellow. It's gonna be positioned at a one, by the way. Then we're gonna take the hex value and change it to a D9A995. Again, that has a D9A995, just like that. And now we have our colors. 
And we're gonna be adding in a cool setting that allows us to change all of these colors however we want without messing with the color map. So we're gonna select these and I'll just hit G to grab them and move them a little bit to the left to give us a little bit more space. Then I'll press Shift A, search up a hue saturation node right here. And if we preview this with the preview on this guy, we can change the hue now to different colors. We can go to something more like a blue. This is gonna be something around here. Obviously this is a little bit saturated. So we can also change the saturation. We can change the value, make it a little darker, make it brighter, and we can change all of these settings however we deem fit. All with this, and so we don't have to change the individual colors of the color app. Super cool. Anyways, the next step is we're gonna be adding in sort of the bump. So to do that, we're gonna hit Shift A, search up a color ramp right here. Take the brick texture color into this color ramp and control shift left click to preview. And then what we wanna do is drag this white in all the way to a point one. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it white everywhere that's not black. But to guarantee that's happening, I'm just gonna basically take this linear and change it to a constant. So we can see that everywhere there's black is the mortar and everywhere is white is the tiles. So all we have to do now is take this, hit Shift A, add a bump node right here, then take the color from this guy into the height of the bump node, then take the normal from this bump into the normal of our shader. So what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make them pop out slightly, as you can see here when we're previewing our shader. We haven't plugged in our color yet, so we'll go ahead and take the color into the principal BSDF like this. And we have it plugged in now. The roughness is not exactly what we want though. So all we have to do to change that is press Shift A. We're gonna search up a noise texture actually. And this is gonna be some surface imperfections that we'll be adding to this tile to make it better. So we're gonna take the vector from this and put it into the noise texture. Control Shift to left click to preview this guy. And then we're going to change the scale on him to a 100. Detail up to a 16. And then the distortion will actually put it a 1. Just to give us some nice cool swirliness in the surface imperfections. Then we'll press Shift A, search up another color ramp. Then I'm going to take this black and move it all the way into a 0.5 to give us a lot of contrast. And the reason for this is we don't want there to be surface imperfections everywhere. Otherwise it just looks dirty. We just want them to be happening a little bit. We don't want them to be too strong either. So we're gonna take this white value and go to the HSV and change the value all the way down to a 0.2, just so that it's very slight. Then what we wanna do is, if we take that right now and plug it into the roughness, control shift and left click. It's looking something like this, and it's a little bit too uh, reflective for my taste. So what we're gonna do is hit shift A and search up a math node right here which is, will allow us to play with the roughness manually. Right now you can see it's too high and that's because it's adding this 0.5 to all of these values. So if we can chill shift and left click this math node, it's looking pretty white. So we're gonna wanna take this and drop it all the way down to a 0.1. So now we can see where it's very smooth and then we can see the surface perfections happening nicely in the roughness. So then if we can preview the shader again, we can see this nice thing or if we see it at a glinting side sort of how you see like your phone screen if you see it at the right angle you can sort of see the fingerprints and stuff on it and it looks really disgusting because i know none of you actually clean your phones because i don't either but yeah when you see it up front it doesn't you can't really tell but then you see it from the side and it's like oh that's ugly yeah which is sort of the effect we want to be happening obviously we can make it rougher by upping this or we can make it less rough by putting it at a zero and have it be more reflective and then they look even more ugly on the sides anyways I'm gonna leave this at a point one. Then the mortar color. As we can see here, it's sort of the exact same color as our tiles right here, and it looks a little bit not good. So to change that, it's really simple. We just hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB node right here. Then we're gonna take the mask that we made right over here and plug it into the factor. Then we'll take this hue saturation value and plug it into color two. Then if we can chill shift and left click this mix node, we now have a different color, which is controllable right here for our mortar. And I'm just gonna make it a pure black. You can make it whatever the heck you want. Something cool that you can do is you can actually make it not quite a pure black, give it some saturation, give it some dark red hue, and it's really close to black actually. If you want the exact values, I'm using a 0 0.024 on the, on the hue, 
full saturation and then 0.01 on the value scale if you want to copy me exactly. But yeah, this is the final product of the mosaic tiles. So this is future me coming back because I've got to tell you to do something. Make sure you actually take this mix node and plug it into the base color and then control shift and left click to preview the shader. I forgot to tell you to do that at the end, but yeah, basically make sure you do that. Otherwise you won't get the color looking quite right and you'll be previewing this the whole time when you don't want to be. Anyways, you can keep watching now. Frack, why'd I have to mess up? And just a quick overview. Remember, you can always change the hue right here, change the saturation, change the value. You can change the hue to like a 0.3. Then you can change how much it affects it. So you can sort of blend them with the factor here, which is sort of a cool thing you can do as well. But yeah, you'll literally never need more mosaic tile again because you had the color, the surface imperfections, and everything. You can adjust it all beautifully. And as I said, it's UV, so it works on any object with a UV layout, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hide this. We'll head over to our layout again. I'm going to make sure we go to rendered preview, have our lighting set up. Awesome, awesome. Then hit shift A. I'll add, let's say, a UV sphere. Why not? Let's give it a little bit more. Oh, it's not cycle, so we don't need more subdivisions. I'll just shade it smooth. Find our material. Search up mosaic tile. Boom. And... We have it here. It's sort of warped, a little bit funny on the top because it is a sphere. Obviously we could fix that if we cleaned up the UV map a little bit, but this is just the base UV map and it's looking pretty darn good. As you can see, we can scale it up, control A, rotation scale, and it will still looks quite nice. Obviously we can go over here to back to the shading workspace, change the scale. Make sure you, when you're changing the scale, you change in uh, even numbers for the most part because if we get our cube back down here, when we have these odd numbers, it sort of gives us halves on the top and the bottom, and that's not exactly what we want, but if we have even numbers, it gives us a perfect size squares all the way through. That's just something funny I noticed, and so yeah. Anyways, that is the end of the tutorial. Hopefully you found it interesting and can use this tile in your renders and on your objects. It makes really good for bathroom uh, visualizations and things like that. But yeah. I'll see you all in the next one. If you have any materials you want to make in the future, comment them down below and let me know because I'll just make them. Anyways, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.